What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the Power BI tutorial series. Today, we're going to be taking a look at DAX. Now, DAX stands for Data Analysis Expressions, and it's basically a library of functions and operators that help you build formulas. You can use DAX to create measures and calculated columns within Power BI, which can really give you a lot of insight into your data. Honestly, it is not super complicated, and hopefully by the end of this video, you'll have a lot more confidence actually using DAX and Power BI. So without further ado, let's jump onto my screen and get started with the tutorial. All right, so let's take a look at our tables and data before we get started. So we have two tables, the Apocalypse Sales and the Apocalypse Apocalypse store. For this apocalypse sales table, we have the customer, product ID, order ID, units sold, and the date it was purchased. And then for the apocalypse store, we have product ID, product name, price, and production cost. Now these are joined together, or they do have a relationship together via the product ID. So what we're going to be using are these new measures and new columns to create our DAX functions. So really quickly, let's go over to this report tab and let's drop down our fields over here so we can see everything. And so to get us started, we're gonna go right up here to Apocalypse Sales. We're gonna right click and click New Measure. And it's gonna open up this right here, which is basically our bar where we can create our functions. And so right here, it's automatically given us the name Measure, but we can change that and we're gonna say Count of Sales. So now we can start writing our DAX function. That's just going to be the name of it and what's going to show up right over here once we click enter. So let's go over here and we're going to say count. And as we're typing, it's automatically giving us options. It has something called IntelliSense. If you've ever used other Microsoft products, IntelliSense is their kind of auto completion that helps you look at other options very quickly. And so we're just going to click on this count and it's prompting us to put in a column name. And so we can come down here and we can select one or we can type it out and it'll try to predict and help us choose which column to select. So for us, we're going to use this order ID, but let's just start typing it out. We'll say order ID and then we can click on it and we're going to close this parentheses and click enter. Or you can go over here and click this check mark, but we're just going to click enter. And so over on this right side, it finalized that and saved that. And we can actually look at that by clicking on this box next to it. And we want to look at this in a table. So now we can see that there are 74 sales. Now, for this, we want to see who's buying our products. We want to see what our, what our client name is. So we're going to go over here and we're going to choose customer. And we're going to put customer on top of sales. And we're just going to take a look at it like this. So now we can see that our number one customer is Uncle Joe's Prep Shop. He has 22 orders. Now they have the most orders with us, but it doesn't necessarily mean that they're spending the most money with us, but we can take a look at that later. The next thing that I wanna take a look at is how many products we're actually selling. What are our big products that we're selling? We have 10 different items, but I don't know exactly which one is selling the best, if one is doing really poorly and getting no orders, this is something that I want to look into. So all we're going to do is go right back up here to Apocalypse Sales again, right click and select new measure. And for this one, we're going to call it the sum of products sold. And all we're going to start out with is by doing sum. And if this seems familiar to something like Excel, you're 100% correct. It is very similar. And remember, these are both Microsoft products. so. There's gonna be similar functionality in both of them. And so this DAX is gonna have a lot of similarities to exactly how it has it in Excel. So we're gonna do an open bracket. And now what we're gonna choose is this units sold. We wanna sum up all of these units sold and see how many we're actually selling. So we're gonna say units sold. I'm gonna hit tab. It's gonna auto complete that. I'm gonna close my parentheses and I'm gonna come over here and click this checkbox. So now it's created that measure and we're already selected in this table. So all we have to do is click the check mark and it's gonna show us that we have 3000 total products sold and we can go through here and see what the big sellers are. And probably the biggest one that I see right off the bat is this multi-tool survival knife. Yeah. So these DAX functions that you can write can be very simple and lead to really good insights that you can use for the visualizations later on. Now I wanna take a look at the difference between something like sum which is an aggregator function and something like sum x, which is an iterator function. 
because if you add x to some of these aggregator functions, you can create them or, or make them into an iterator function. So you can have sum and sum x or average and average x. Adding x onto the end of them can make them into an iterator function. So let's take a look and see how that actually works. I'm going to show you the difference and then I'm going to talk through the difference at the end. So really quickly, let's go back to our data and let's go to the apocalypse store. Now, what we have right here is we have the price and we have the production cost. And we wanna see how much profit we're getting from each of these, as well as we can take a look at the units sold and see how much money we are actually making. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna come back over here. We're gonna to go to apocalypse store. We're gonna right click and create a measure. And in just a little bit, we're gonna be creating a new column and that'll kind of show the difference really well. So we're gonna create this new measure and we're gonna name it profit and we're going to come over here and what we're going to do is we're going to take the sum oops we're going to start with our sums we're going to take the sum of the price and then we're going to close that parentheses and we're going to subtract the sum of the production cost so all that does is it says if something costs twenty dollars if we sold it for twenty dollars and it only costs us ten dollars that's ten dollars in profit for that item and then what we're going to want to do is we're gonna actually want to encapsulate that really quickly because we're about to use multiply. And then we're gonna sum, and now we're gonna take the units sold. So how many units were actually sold at that profit that we just made? So let's see if that works, and let's click the check right here. And so we have the profit. So let's click on the profit. Oops, that's not what I wanted to do. Let's use a new one, or let's create a new uh, table. We're gonna click profit, Let's make it a table and I'm going to pull this right over here. Now we have our profit, but what I really want to know is which customer is spending the most money at my store. So we're going to come right over here. We're going to click on customer and we'll put customer at the top. And just at a glance, we can see that Uncle Joe's prep shop is spending the most money at the store. Now, what I want to show you is the difference between sum and sum X. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to this profit and going to copy this this entire thing. And we're gonna go back here to this table. Now we just created a measure and we were able to break it down by each customer. So let's go back over here. Now let's go up here to home and we're gonna create a new column and we're gonna call this profit underscore column. And we're gonna literally paste the exact same thing into here. And we're gonna hit enter. And each row is the exact same thing. So what it's doing is it is going through the price. And it's adding all of it up and calculating it at the bottom. It's adding the production cost. It's going all the way down and calculating it at the bottom. And then it's going over and looking at how many units it sold. And then it's performing this calculation up here. And then it gives us the total and it's doing it for every single row. But that's not really what we want it to show. What we want it to show is the profit for each row. What we want it to say is here's the price for the rope, the production cost for the rope, and then how many units we actually sold. And then it'll calculate that and give us the actual profit for just that row. But we cannot do it by just using this sum. What we need to do is use something called sum X. So let's add another column. Let's go back to home. I'm gonna say new column. And now we're going to say profit underscore, oops, underscore column underscore sum x. And now we're going to use sum x and hit tab. And we need to choose the table that we want to put this in. So we're going to say apocalypse sales because that's the table that we're looking at right here. We're going to say comma. And now we need to input an expression, which it says it returns the sum of an expression evaluated for each row in a table. Before, when you're just using sum, it's looking at all of these combined. Now it's taking it row by row. So what we're gonna do is basically input the same thing as we did before. I'm gonna copy, I'm gonna paste that. It's not gonna be correct. I need to get rid of these sums. But it's basically the exact same equation. Give me just a second. And let's get rid of this sum. And let's see if this works. So let's click the check button. And now this looks a lot better. So what this is now showing us is at a row level, this nylon rope made us 51,000, almost 52,000 dollars. 
the waterproof matches made us $15,000. And we can go down and look at each item and see how much that actually made us versus this profit column. And so that is the biggest difference between sum and sum x. Hopefully that made sense. I know that sum and sum x and, and the difference between an aggregator function and the iterator function can be a little bit confusing, especially if you've never done it before. But hopefully that was a good example for you to understand that concept. Now let's go back over here to apocalypse sales. Right here we have a date purchase. Now in the DAX function, we have some ways that we can interact with dates. And so I wanna take a look at those really quickly. So we're gonna go right up here and click on new column. And we're just gonna leave that as column. But what we're gonna say is day. So there's a few different ones. We have day, dates, YTD, next day, previous day, and weekday. And they all are pretty self-explanatory. If you click on it, let's click on weekday. It says it's gonna return a number from one to seven, identifying the day of the week of a date. So let's use this really quickly. And so we're gonna say date purchased and click tab, hit comma. And it's gonna give us a three different options basically. It's a one, a two, and a three. Um, right here, if you hit this button, read more, you can read more on it. This is gonna say Sunday is equal to one, Saturday is equal to seven. I like this one personally, which is Monday equals one. In my brain, it just makes more sense. So I'm gonna click on two, I'm gonna close that parentheses, and we're gonna, guess I'll say, uh, let's say day of week for the column. Let's click that checkbox. And now Saturdays are equal to sixes, Mondays are equal to one. This allows us to see which day of the week people are buying the most products on or, or which day of the week is somebody submitting their orders on. And so let's go over to our report. Let's get rid of this. I'm just going to move this. Over. Jeez, I hate moving stuff sometimes. All right, really quickly, I wanna show you the difference between what we just did and what we already have. So we have this um, date purchased, and let's make that into a bar graph. And what we're gonna be taking a look at is actually the units sold. So right here, we have this, and obviously for we don't want 2022, we're gonna get rid of the year. We only have one quarter. Right here, we can see January, February, March. So we can tell that January has the most sales or the most units sold in that month. If we get rid of that and we go down to day, we do have some information, but we don't know what day of the week it is. It could change from month to month. And it's really hard to tell exactly what if there's any pattern there at all. That's where what we just created comes in handy. So let's recreate this exact same thing, but instead we're gonna use day of week. So we're gonna select day of week and units sold. Let's drag that down and move this over right here. And this day of the week should be on the X axis. And it's really easy now to see if there's a pattern here. There's really not, uh, at least not for this fake data that we have, um, but just, I, I want these uh, data labels on really quickly. Um, it's not easy to see if there's any pattern. Again, Monday has the most. So maybe that, that, I mean, it goes down a little bit and then it picks back up. So maybe middle of the week is our least uh, sales day. Our Wednesdays and Thursdays are a little bit lower than the rest. And the beginning and the end of the week tend to be the highest. Again, not a huge pattern, but, you know, it's much easier to see if there is a pattern from week to week or what day of the week now that we use this weekday function. And so this can be really, really useful. Let's go back here to our data. And now we're going to look at our last DAX function for this video. Let's go up here and create a new column. And we're gonna be looking at something called the if statement. Now, if you've ever used Excel, I'm sure you have heard of this and you can do the exact same thing here in Power BI. And so we're gonna name this one order size, or order underscore size. And so all we're gonna say is IF, we're gonna click on this one right here. We need to perform our logical test. And then we wanna say, if it's true, what's our value? And if it's false, what is our value? So what we're gonna be looking at is units sold. So we're looking at order size. So we're gonna say if units sold is greater than 25, what's gonna happen? If it is true, if the order is larger than 25, we wanna say it's a big order. And if it's not, we wanna say it's a small order. Super simple, we'll close up parentheses, we'll click okay. 
And now really quickly, we're able to see if this is a big order or a small order. And so that is all I have for you today. There are a lot of other DAX functions, but the ones that we looked at today are ones that are very common, ones that you'll see the most. And there can be a lot of really complex and intricate DAX functions that you can create. And in our project at the end of this series, I will be sure to include some more complex DAX functions, but hopefully this gave you a good introduction into DAX so you know how to use it a little bit better. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate it. If you like this video, be sure to like and subscribe and check out all of my other videos on everything data analyst related. I will see you in the next video.